In this presentation, we're going to record the purchase of furniture for cash, furniture being a depreciable item, a property, plant, and equipment type of item. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitar Company dashboard. We're going to be opening up our balance sheet first. We're going to go to the accounting drop down. We're going to go down to our balance sheet. When that opens up, we're going to be right clicking on the tab up top so that we can then duplicate that tab. Going to change the date to uh, January 2020. So we're going to go to January 2020 here and update that report. Now we're going to go down and think, consider what we're going to think about doing here. We're going to hey, say we're going to be purchasing furniture like couches and whatnot for our business. That means the checking account is going to be going down. The other side is going to be going to a some type of asset account here. We have computer and office equipment. So computer and office equipment, we might add another one under the fixed asset categories called simply furniture and fixture which is another kind of uh, common type of uh, category for the fixed assets or the property plant and equipment now when we think about the fixed assets note again and this often happens when you start up a new type of organization right we take out the loan we took out the loan we have some money then we're buying some types of things that aren't part of the normal type of business transaction that we see on a day-to-day -day basis in other words back to our flow chart here Remember that we're really thinking about those transactions. You want to think of differentiate in your mind those things that happen multiple times a day where we have a set flow for them. And that would be the customer cycle, the vendor cycle, and so on. And then those other types of things where they don't happen all the time. We have we but we don't buy property and plants and equipment all the time. We don't buy couches all the time or whatnot, you know, for the office furniture all the time. And uh therefore uh, and they're not going to be something that's kind of ingrained in just the, the normal form. Like we don't have like just an invoice for the purchase, you know, like a form that just purchases furniture. We don't have that because we don't do it every day. So, and that just, and we want to point that out because uh, those are going to be kind of the more difficult transactions. Sometimes you got to go outside kind of the norm to think about how they happen. And they often typically happen, or some of these types of transactions will happen when you set up the business because that's when you have to make the initial investment and expenditures that aren't part of the normal cycle once things are set up hopefully you have a system that everything flows nicely in this like little flow chart for the day-to-day -day transactions so that's what we're going to do here we got our money now we've got our money we need to invest in some furniture so people want to come into our office here or our guitar shop and are happy to sit down on a nice clean couch to practice on a guitar so they can take guitar lessons and buy guitars and give us money so we're going to say that uh, we need to we need to purchase that. So we're going to go back over here. Now, how are we going to do this? It's going to be an expenditure of cash. We'll talk about what happens if we finance something like uh, the equipment at a later point in time. But this time, we're just going to say we purchased it for cash, even though it's going to be a large item. That also means that we're not consuming the item at this point in time. So it's not going to be an expense, but rather have to put it on the books as an, an asset that's going to help us in the future. And even if you're on a cash basis, which means you, if you're on a pure cash basis, you would actually expense it, even if you bought like a $100,000 thing for cash because you paid cash for it. But even the tax code when you're on a cash basis recognizes that you kind of have to deviate from the cash to more of the accrual system when you buy really large things because it, it, it really distorts you know, the, the recognition of income versus expenses uh, because you're buying something that's going to be benefiting the long term into the future. Therefore, no effect on the income statement until we depreciate at this point in time, it's going to be on the books as an asset. And when you purchase large assets too, the, and especially when you finance them, they might be the type of transactions you want to just get some guidance possibly with uh, your accountant or CPA or tax preparer that might help you out with those transactions that don't happen all the time. All right, so then we're going to go back to the first tab and think about how we want to record this. I'm going to go back up to the plus button up top. And since we're paying cash for it, we can go right down to the spend money. So I'm going to go to spend money. We'll be spending money from the checking account. So we're going to be spending money out of that old checking account. It's going to be great. Spending money is always a good time. And we're going to say that this is going to be going to, I'm going to say Office Depot. And so that's a new contact. We don't have Office Depot yet. So I'm going to set Office Depot up as uh, the new contact. And we're going to say the date here. Let's keep it at the 10th. So I'm going to keep this at the 10th. And then we have the reference. We have the item. No item. I'm just going to say description is office uh, furniture, let's say. And the quantity, I'll say one. Price, I'm going to say we bought it for 16000 So it's going to be a $16,000 purchase. Then we have to put the other side somewhere. 
the temptation here would be to put it to an expense, but usually it's going to be this something of this dollar amount, and it doesn't come really down to dollar amount, but it kind of does at the same time. If it's over a certain dollar amount, you're going to probably, it should start to trigger in your mind, well, should this be something that, that I just expense, or is it something that needs to be capitalized or put on the books as an asset, a depreciable asset, and then depreciated over time? So we're going to say that this needs to be put on the asset, uh, on the books as an asset. Okay, so then I could choose the account that we already have here. If I if I look into the fixed assets, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down here. These are all expenses. That's what you would kind of think normally if you're having cash going out. But no, not this time. Uh, we're looking for another asset account. So we've got the expenses, and we have the all the and then here's the assets. All right. So we have the computer and office equipment. Now I'm going to add another section for the assets just to practice doing this. So I want to be in the same category. So I want the account number to be around 1520. I'm going to put it at 1525. And notice I'm purposely leaving some space, at least five, five account numbers in case I have some other account that I need to put in between there. And you might want to skip more than that. You might want to put like 10 in between because later on you might say, hey, I want to add a bunch of accounts of accounts between those two accounts. And if you put them right next to each other, then it's a mess. So you want to leave some space. So I'm going to say 1525 uh, that I'm going to that I'm going to set up a new account here. So I'm going to go up top, say new account, and I'm going to try to remember my code 1525. The account type here's the key. This is the key. It's an asset account, and it's an it's a fixed asset type of account. Fixed asset type of account. That's the point. And note what we're going to do here is we're going to put the fixed asset on the books. We're not going to use this software to calculate the, de the depreciation on it. We're going to depend on tax software or our CPA to help us with, a, with the calculation. And then we're simply going to enter an adjusting entry into the system for depreciation. So the name of the account, of the account is going to be called Furniture and Fixtures. Is that not spelled right? It's got a little line under it. Like it's like I did something wrong. Furniture and fixed. There we go. All right. So we'll keep that. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And there we have it. So this is going to be decreasing the checking account. The other side going to furniture and fixture. Now, if you're actually going to be writing a check with it, you could go here to pay by check. And that'll add uh, the account number. And it'll go to that uh, when you want to print the check you can go to the printed checks where you can see that we saw that in the past where it'll basically create a pdf file for you you have to take the check put it into the printer and it'll print and print the check that'll be pre-numbered pre-printed check that you have to put the check information on through the printer all right so that is that and if it's electronic transfer or something like that then we're not going to check off the pay by check and we'll just record the decrease in the checking account as we'll do here so i'm going to say save and let's go on over to the balance sheet and see what happens with it. I'm going to go on to the balance sheet. I'm going to update the balance sheet. And then let's take a look at the checking account. There should be a decrease to the checking account because we spent money with a spend money form. And so I'm going to go down and we have the spend money form here. The 16000 decreasing, making the, the account go down. And there is our transaction and our spend money form. Going back over to the first page or back to the balance sheet, I should say, the form or the report of the balance sheet, the financial statement, our favorite financial. And then under the fixed assets, we have the furniture and fixtures. So here's the 16,000 on the other side. We created another group under the subcategory of the fixed assets. So notice it's not going to affect the income statement. There's been no effect on the income statement yet. When will it affect the income statement? when we depreciate it which we should do periodically at the end of the month and or end of the year and we'll typically have help to do that possibly from our accounting firm or tax preparer that usually will have the detailed schedules about uh, the furniture and fixture what we would have to do under this system if this is the type of system you're using with your tax preparer is provide the tax preparer with the purchases that we made there shouldn't be a whole lot of them we're not purchasing fixed furniture and fixture every day and then they can add that to their tax software and calculate both the depreciation for tax purposes and book depreciation if we want to differentiate between the two and then give us the adjusting entry periodically for that. And we'll just enter that into the system on a periodic basis, increasing the expense for depreciation expense and the accumulated depreciation here. We'll see an example of that when we get to the adjusting entry process at a later point in the course.
So let's go ahead and do this again. We're going to buy another piece of equipment here. I'm going to go back over to the first tab. I'm going to select the plus button up top and we're going to be going on down to the spend money. We're going to spend more money. We want to make our shop look nice so people want to come in and play guitars with it and buy stuff. So we're going to think that we're going to go into the checking account here and we're going to have then this one's going to go to Amazon. So we're buying this from Amazon. It's going to be a new contact. So I'm just going to say it's a new contact. And this date, I'm going to say is the 11th. So I'm going to say it's on January 11, January 1, 1. And the no item, I'm going to say that this is once again, furniture, you know, this is, it's a guitar couch. And we're going to say we got one of these and it's going to be 7,000. And the other account, once again, it's going to go into furniture and fixture, which I could just type in at this point. If I could spell it right there, furniture and fixture. That's the one we just set up. 7,000. This is going to be a uh, decrease in the checking account going into the furniture and fixture account. Let's check it out. I'm going to say save. I'm going to go back over to the balance sheet and see if it does what we expect it to do. So I'm going to update uh, the account and that makes it more likely that it will do what we expect it to do. And I'm going to go into the checking account and we should see then the $7,000 decrease for the money we spent on really nice furniture. It was really worth the cost because I think it'll draw a lot of people in. So we have the 7,000 there on the spend money form. If we go back up top and then we go to the other side, it's going to be in the fixed assets section. So we're going to go on down to the fixed assets, 23,000. Notice we have multiple items in this fixed assets section. If we were to calculate depreciation, we would need to break all the fixed assets out uh, into their own section and have the related, you know, how long their useful lives and the method we're going to use and whatnot to calculate that. And so we'll do that outside the system and simply record the adjusting entry for it. There's the 7,000 here. Looks good. We're going to have to record depreciation for it at the end of the month, which we will do with the help of adjusting entries. Now let's just go ahead and review our trustee trial balance at this point in time. So I'm going to go down to the accounting up top. I'm, I'm going to, I'm in the first tab. I'm going to the reports then. And we're looking for that trustee trial balance, the good old TB trial balance. And it's going to be here. I put a star next to it, so it's in my favorite reports. But I go down here just in case you, you don't consider it a favorite yet. This is where you'd go to find it. We're going to be putting the date here then at the 31st of January and update that report. And this is the numbers that uh, we have thus far. So you can kind of review this. We will be printing this out so you can check your numbers at the end of most or all presentations. Unless we forget a couple, which could quite be the case, but we're going to try every time have the trial balance for you to take a look at, check your numbers printed out for you.